Hi, I'm Dale Whistler, and you're watching our. Yeah. Hi, I'm Dale Whistler, and you're watching AustinArtist.com. The, the back cover copy says it's a dark fable of desire between a self-medicating neuroscience and a fallen angel. It's, um, what it really is is a chance for me to get to play with, with the nature of desire. I wanted to ask questions about what it means to want and not get, to have want turn into craving, to have hunger turn into addiction. And, and I created a cast of characters for myself that would let me look at that from as many different sides as I could. So I have Olivia, who is the fallen angel of desire. She's a vampire. And the way she looks is dependent on who's looking at her. So her body shifts subtly to adjust to the tastes of the people looking at her. So unless there's somebody looking at her, she doesn't know what she looks like. When she looks in the mirror, unless someone else is looking at her, she can't see anything. She can only feed from people who want or fear her. So she's, she is set up to be a foil to the questions of what it means to be wanted, but not want. Um, and then her opponent and lover at the end is uh, a neuroscientist because I also wanted to to avail myself of everything we know about human desire from a very scientific point of view. So he is a neuroscientist, he understands what pathways fire, what is involved in attraction, what is involved in mate selection, what is involved from a very kind of clinical point of view, and of course what his philosophy does not account for in any way is vampires. I've always used writing as a tool. It's always been something that I did to to work things out. You know, it started, you know, as a journal and then it started it went from, you know, just private writing, journaling, working things through to um to an uh, online diary. I kept an online diary for a while and found that contact really really useful. Um you know, you're you're writing about the experiences of 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 dating and getting married and the whole you know journey and and finding people who say oh i know exactly how you feel or that resonated with me and that that was where the idea of it becoming a conversation sort of woke up for me if i don't write every other day i really lose the train of whatever it is that i'm doing um, so even if, but you know, life is complicated and things happen. So even if I can't write every other day, I will at least read what I wrote most recently to keep the ideas. I mean, you know, this from working at home, you know, when you have something like that, that you do, you're never not working. You're always at work in your head. You know, I, I used to work in advertising and I told my boss at some point he ought to pay me to take showers because 50% of what I did for him came to me in the shower, you know? <laughs> my, my husband is, is a fantastic editor. He's my first reader. Um, and he, 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 yeah, he, he reads and he edits and he supports me and believes in me and talks me up when I'm feeling down and makes me stop when I'm stuck and he's the guy going okay it's time to quit now what's for dinner because <laughs> I could stay in my head I could stay there and play I have fun when it's going well it's very hard to stop and it's it's such a trick the the balancing balancing it I came to Austin in 1990 to go to grad school and I, like so many of <laughs> I love it here and I just, I never left. Um, the writers community in Austin is amazing and I have only tapped the, the surface of it. I belong to a local branch of a national organization which is the most 
remarkably supportive and loving and enthusiastic group of people that I would ever hope to have never worked with. I mean, and, and maybe it's the that writing is relatively solitary. I've, I've been around creative artistic people all my life and they, you know, it can be, <laughs> it can be a little spicy sometimes, but I've never seen a group of artists be that universally supportive of one another, that affectionate and kind and generous with their help and 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 all of the artists I have known have been all of those things, but they've also been the complete inverse. There, there's competition and cattiness and infighting, and there's just none of that in the writer's community that I've come to know here. If you want to be a writer, the first thing you got to do is live. You have to have experiences to write about. Um, so read, <laughs> read widely, read everything you can get your hands on, read voraciously. I am, I am completely indiscriminate in, in my reading material. I will read genre fiction, I will read literary fiction, I read a lot of nonfiction, read, um, live, read, develop good work habits. The next book is, is a time travel horror love story um, about a contemporary woman living in Portland, she's a graphic artist, who on her wedding night wakes up in the body of the six foot tall Irish revolutionary freedom fighter named Maud Gone in 1889. And in the body of this woman she meets and immediately falls in love with the Irish poet W.B. W. B. Yeats. And so, and it's Yeats, it's Yeats because he's wonderful and magical and, and because he was a member of the Golden Dawn and heavily involved in the, the whole occult movement in Ireland at the turn of the century. But also because what I wanted to play with in this book is I wanted just an absolutely unabashedly down on one knee in the Irish moonlight romantic romance and and then to put that guy up against me going oh come on get up you know nobody does the knee thing anymore you know geez this is embarrassing you know and I wanted to play with what it means to to just be completely embarrassed by that over-the-top heartfelt thing and also really kind of like it. You know, I wanted to play with with the the tension that I feel between idealism and the the rosy cheeked ponytail, you know, we can change the world and and the kind of jaded cynical 21st century You know, you start imagining what could be different you know, if you could do it over again, what you could do differently. And and my imagination just goes, it's fractal. I mean, it's like every tree branches into a thousand different, I just have no idea. Um, I like where I am. I like what I get to do.